I'm always trying to look for what's the connection between different artistic forms. And <laughs> I, and what I do know is, and I, I know that it applies to what you do in music uh, is, and, and also uh, on your on your talk show, when it's time to go, you just go. You know, you look at all the different things that you've been through uh, in your life and in this recent, in, in your personal life recently. Mm. And people might say, well, how do you keep going? It's because you take it moment to moment to moment. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna write this song. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna write that song. I'm gonna move to this moment, then to that moment. Well, that's interesting you said that because that's literally, I think everybody had a hard time during COVID. I, I, or they tried to keep our show going and well, we did. Um, but like from my ranch in Montana, which had very poor internet and like could not be a more remote location in the mountains. And I'm traipsing through snow. My marriage is falling apart. No one knows. I'm learning all these songs. I'm doing this other stuff for music thing. Like it's just like ev just shit is hitting the fan. And, 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 and all the while, you know, you're like, What's up, America? And you know you're smiling, and you're you're. Yeah. I think I think a lot of us have to do that. Whatever vocation you choose, like whatever your job is, like I think a lot of us have have to do that sometimes. But what I found helpful is, I would be like like truth, like completely bawling, like yeah. right before we would be shooting and be like, how do I fix this? Like you know, mm -hmm. and then we'd start and we'd like let's say cover like an HI story, and some amazing human would come on the screen and just say how they're they went from something maybe tragic and did something that usually maybe people would find cheesy or something, but it's so healing. Mm -hmm. And I think when you step outside yourself and not necessarily compartmentalize it, but but just let it go for a moment because it seems so huge. And then you focus on someone else. It kind of changes the perspective on everything in your life. Of course, and it kind yeah, of, it's yeah. healing in a yeah. sense, but it's hard to keep smiling. Right. There was this, uh, one time when I was like, you, I never cancel. I'm like, I'm not that person. And I, I was like, I can't actually fix this. Like, I looked like, oh God, put her in a jacket. <laughs> like, I was like, it was real bad. And I was right. really sad. And and so we had to like cancel. Um, and I know that's so rare for you. Because it is, yeah. I've actually seen footage of you at some award show and you're performing your ass off. And I know that I later heard the backstory, which is that you needed to have an appendectomy. Didn't they oh. like, and they like, the award doctors- shows are like the death for me. You don't understand, like that happened. Yes, like my appendix was about to burst. I literally went into surgery hours later. Something else happened the other time I was doing it. My first performance ever on the Grammys. This is a real story. I was called right as I was leaving for the Grammys, being picked up by my publicist at the time, Roger Wodnowski, and was told I had cancerous results. And I was like, and cancer like runs in our family, like ovarian, cervical, like mm -hmm. just the gamut, breasts, everything. And I was like, what? And I and and the whole day was ruined because I just couldn't stop crying. Cause I was like, wait, I haven't done so much like in my life. I was like, and, and it, it just was the worst day ever. True story. The next morning I called back to schedule. Cause I was like, I can't, they, they're like, we need you to come in now. I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to be performing on the Grammys. So, and it was like a huge moment for any kid that grows sure. up watching. That's like the epic thing for you. And, and literally called the next morning for like what I needed to do next. And they were like, oh, we're so sorry. Those were actually someone else's results. No. Jesus. No. Jesus Christ. And I was like, you? No. First of all, my first thought was like, who did you tell they were fine? Right. And now you're calling them and telling them they have cancer. Like, I'm like, wait, what? And 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 then they call Clark Kellyson. And then I was like, <laughs> I know, and then and We're so sorry, Clark. You know, whether you're on a cross country drive or on your daily commute, time in the car is perfect for listening to podcasts like, I don't know, this one. <laughs> <laughs> T-Mobile covers more highway miles with 5G than anyone. Their network helps keep you connected to all your favorite podcasts when you're out and about. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I like to road trip sometimes. I do too, and I, I have T-Mobile, and I, I can honestly say there's coverage. That's important. Like There have been times in my life where I'm out on the road, driving around, and uh, especially on those family trips. You're out in the desert. You want to make sure you have that coverage. Yeah. What if you get like your car breaks down and you're just 
there. Sitting there like a chump? Yeah. With no coverage? Yeah. <laughs> Not this guy. I've got T-Mobile. Got 5G. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash C-Y. That's S-E-E-W-H-Y. I'm just telling you, award shows get ruined for me. They're like, <laughs> like sometimes I don't want to go because I'm like, what the hell is going to happen to me? Like, Because like, something always happens, I feel like. And, and I won that night. Oh my God. And then I won again. And then I just kept crying because I was like, God's giving me this before he takes it. Oh! <laughs> I was, sorry. I was, I'm sorry. I had to have my Thank makeup. Thank you, God, for this one last. I was. What? I, I get to live? Had. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, your performance was because, because it's an emotional song in general. They were like, it was so beautiful. And I was like, that's because I thought I was dying. And I was like, so worried. Oh. And they had to redo my makeup three times. I'm like, you people ruined an entire moment to like for me and I just I yeah I award shows in general like shit always happens to me I don't know I'm always afraid to say yes like because who knows what's gonna happen my favorite yeah. uh my award show moment was I was working well I, there was a, there's a bunch of crazy things that have happened but I was working on an, an award show once and emceeing it and had to do kind of like a song and dance number. And mm -hmm. I can sort of like hold a tune if necessary in a comedic way. So it was all fine, but then it was important that I hit this note at the end. Yeah. And so they said, you know about this, but they said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you into the Capitol Records building. There's the orchestra is there that's gonna be- Did you do it while they were playing? And yeah, it was the, it was the greatest thing <gasps> in the world. And what they did is they had me hit this, sing it there, so they had it on this track. Yeah. But then they had me hit this one note. So I was gonna sing it live, but then at the end go, so welcome to the, you know, I gotta hit this note up there and hold it, which I don't do. Uh, it'd been piece of cake for you, but I don't do that. So they they auto-tuned it. And then they uh, they did this thing where they extend it for a long time. So it looks like I'm really holding the note. Oh yeah. And they said, so Conan, just get to that part and then get to there and then go and get down on one knee and mime it and we'll, we'll slide it across and it'll look like you hit it. Okay, so I do the whole bit. I do all the jokes. Then I go into the song. Then I hit the note and the crowd, you know, was really liked it. And they were yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Woo. And I walk off stage and Barry Manilow <laughs> is standing there. <laughs> And he's looking at me and he says, hey man, you hit that note and held it. <laughs> and I said, auto-tune pre-record. And he went, oh, and walked away. Oh. <laughs> like I had farted, he was, you know. He was, he was so impressed and then rejected it. He went from, wow, that was, and then his face fell like he'd had a stroke. <laughs> And he just turned and walked away. I'm like, yeah. He was just like, oh, you sicken me. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun moment for me.